1985, ITV aired the first of a six-part drama comedy called The Beck Affair, which starred James Bolam, Barbara Flynn, and a whole host of others. And it became kind of the kind of go-to program to watch on a Sunday evening. It aired for an hour, an hour an episode. Now, I've looked online for YouTube for By the Beck Affair, you know, has anybody posted anything? And nobody's actually done kind of what I want to do, which is a, a location shoot. So I find myself in Leeds. So when Jill holds her evening um, seminar class thing, she has her name on the door here. And Harry, with his dog Jason, come along and put cancelled owing to illness on the door. <laughs> and we also see that this gets used as the um, registrar when Trevor comes to look for possibly any hints of anybody registering a death for John the Barman. Wow, fascinating being on site. It doesn't look anything like in the programme. It's so closed in, this little square here. But you get an overview. It ran for six episodes in 1985. Then in 1987, they released the Beiderbeck tapes. And then in 1988 came the Beiderbeck connection. So what I want to do this morning is see if I can locate some of these places that, that were used for filming. And that will be Jill's houses, the town hall, as we've just seen. I think there's a level crossing. What else have I got to look for? Hmm, a school, block of flats, the what's-his-name memorial playing field, all sorts of things. So bear with me, I'm going to be driving around this little area of Leeds and we'll see if we can find some locations. Are you ready for this? And what we've got here is, we've got the two policemen are supposed to be keeping Jill or Trevor under surveillance because of Ivan and the connection with him. And there's this one scene Coming down that road there, you get Trevor's little yellow van meandering down, I think whether you can see it. These people whom we're supposed to observe with discretion. Yes, what about them? The bold inspector Hobson says they drive a yellow van. A pleasing you? I spy with my little eye something beginning with yellow. The number plate matches? We could chase that. A difficult thing to do, discreetly. Especially in your lunch break. And all things considered, I saw no yellow van. And what, what, what I noticed in that, that footage scene was that, first of all, it's not Trevor driving the little yellow van. Spoiler alert, here's a little clip here, or a little picture, obviously the production team. But also, once the van drives down here and meanders down there, I was trying to find this location. I was thinking, how, how do I find out exactly where this road is? And I saw that there's a little furniture shop at the end of the road here. Welcome to Ketley's, it says, Ketley's Furniture Store. And this is where my detective work comes into four. If I superimpose here an image from the, from the still, you see Ketley's Furniture Store. So it's really a case of just Googling, where's Ketley's Google Store in... Oh, Google Store, where is Ketley's Furniture Store in, in Leeds? And we're actually in Yaldon. Wow, fascinating. So that's the town hall just there, and this is that scene there. I wonder if all the other locations I've got to find are just in all the same vicinity. Let's go and see what we can find relating to the Beiderbeck and kind of experience it on foot. Now, as we walk down here from Abbeydale Mount into Abbeywell, Abbeydale Way, we see this. Does this look familiar? So apart from the Lilandi and the overgrown bushes, this is where you'd have had the three guys with the Sierras, homogenous. And that is Jill's house. So, um, you know, a lot of the scenes were filmed here, back garden scene, interiors were shot here. What makes me wonder is, does the present owner know the connection 
that their house has to the Beidebeck affair. <laughs> Shall I go and knock on the door and see if I can um, have a look around? That would be an imposition. So what we've got here, again, it's a trick of photography. You see the fire engine coming down in a scene. You see Trevor coming round the corner to pick her up for school in a scene. What you don't realise is Abbeydale Oval is literally an oval. So behind this house and the next house, this road is a, a complete circuit. And then it leads back out to the main road. So the house featured only in the Beidebeck affair. By the time Beidebeck tapes and connections were filmed, she had moved. And the subsequent house was used in both those two series which is on the itinerary, so maybe we'll see that next. And indeed we do find the second house, 15 Norfolk Green, or is it Hillview Rise? One of these places, now a lot of things happen here. had six grey men in, six, in three black cars arriving. Ivan spends a lot of time turning up here. Our friendly neighbourhood coppers do a lot of surveillance. And just here on this corner, let's take a little walk here. This is where Peterson has an accident with Mr Pitt, just as he's coming down the bend on his bicycle. He comes round the corner here and crashes into Peterson's car. Now the, the weird thing is, right, as each of these episodes you always have like Big Al and Little Norm coming down here with their bike. The six men in their three black cars will depart the house and disappear up that lane. But here's the thing, right, if you come round here it's a dead end. So whether Trevor arrives because he's picking her up, whether the men in their cars appear and then disappear up this lane, it's a dead end. But yeah, look, this is 15 Norfolk Gardens. Jill's second house as seen in the Beidebeck tapes and the Beidebeck connection. So I guess on the left here is the man with man's house with the wishing well who's got it in for him the defrocked or unfrocked bank manager. <laughs> oh, it's turned out lovely today. And again, I wonder if they know that their house has a connection with that fabulous cult TV series, the Beidebeck trilogy. The tapes, the connection, the affair. Do, 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 do. I'm going to find somewhere else to look at. Does this look familiar? This is Car Lane. Where Trevor hears a series of small explosions and then continues to deliver leaflets with Jill. Just up and down, coming in and out of each of these gardens. And then he spies a little Cub Scout. Crosses the road and then heads uphill to the scout hut. I'll see you back at the van. We haven't finished. I've got to check something out. What are you checking out? The Baden-Powell connection. Check out the Baden-Powell connection. There's always a connection, and that was one of the beauties of the Beiderbeck, is that actually it wasn't just a story of Jill and Trevor, although it was primarily, and all their escapades. But the way it's written, it involves so many other characters, all with their own little storyline. And halfway through sort of episode one, two, and three, you think, why is it veering off? Why is it showing this and that and the other? The detectives, Sergeant Hobson, you know, and his issues with his superintendent. 
and it just all comes together and you realize that all of the stories and all of the plot is about all of them so yeah trevor disappears into the scout hut there's a school up there and we don't film at schools <laughs> so car lane here in outskirts of leeds the the baden powell connection let's go and find somewhere else oh look it's the alderman what's his name memorial playing field now it all kind of kicks off here because this is where Trevor is asked to referee because little Norm is unable to do it because he's got to shout it, lads! <laughs> got to stand on touchline. So he leaves Jill on the touchline and you've got a little crowd, Trevor's refereeing and then ultimately he sees Janie disappearing over a crest of a hill as she's walking and disappearing down the line and he sees her and he gently puts down his referee's whistle and his notebook and just disappears. It's like, he doesn't even say, I can't do this now, I've got to go somewhere. And a riot ensues and the police turn up. Oh, and also Harry, and we know he's called Harry because if you read the book for the Biodepec trilogy that Alan Plater issued after the, uh, after the um, series had aired, he actually is given the name Harry. Although in the episodes you never actually hear that. It's just two scenes I think <laughs> stand out to me. One is where Jill and Trevor are driving in a car and he sees, I know him. Who? The fellow with the dog. What's his name? Jason. What's the dog's name? She asks. <laughs> and then later in the classroom with Big Al, Actually, I do know what an informer looks like. He looks like a man with a dog. What's his name? Jason. And Big Al goes, and what's the fella's name? <laughs> so he's on the ball. I like the way you're thinking there. <laughs> okay, yeah, Alderman. Oh, and they, they hijack Harry here, don't they? They kidnap him to go and give him some questioning. I think there's a couple of other places I want to see. Let's see what they look like. So having abandoned his tenure as a referee, Trevor goes chasing after the platinum blonde and she disappears into a block of flats. It's slightly changed because there's a scene where Trevor has stood on an embankment, probably here. I'm going to walk across it. And you see Harry and the dog, Jason, and Trevor's looking down on the block of flats. I'm thinking it's here, it could be lower down, but you get this aspect of the flats here. So if I turn the um, camera around. And what happens here? We get Big Al and Little Norm delivering a lawnmower. Strange, having a lawnmower? Well, maybe it's for a family member. Janie goes in to one of the doors and Trevor goes in knocking on doors. So what did you do? Go knocking on doors asking for a platinum blonde? <laughs> I'm sure it was the first block, block of flats there, but it could have been the second one. But there's only two blocks. Fascinating. <laughs> so strange actually being on location and surreal. I'm not going to go and knock on the flats and ask if they've seen a beautiful platinum blonde. It's such a magical program, you know, and back in 85 when it was airing and we had, what did we have, 85, four channels, BBC One and Two, ITV and Channel Four, I think Channel Four had hit the airwaves in 1984. I kind of remember that because my son was born on that, in that year. And, and so people would tune in because there was nothing else to watch. And they had millions of viewings. I think you can now watch it on, is it Britbox TV? So it's showing on that, but you never see repeats of it, like on Dave or anything else. But I have the DVDs and I watch it frequently. <laughs> right, let's go and find somewhere else. One thing I find fascinating about cinematography is perspective and how it makes things look totally different. So here we've got the crossing and the road slopes down, but in the, in the, in the filming, it actually makes it look like it's a level road. So Big Al parks up here 
and says to Trevor, shoot up the road, go around the roundabout and come back like the clappers. And he nips into the level crossing to speak to his brother about closing the gate. So let's take a walk up to the roundabout. And what Trevor's going to do is go round and round the roundabout for a few times until he can lose Hobson and then come tearing down here like the clappers. So I wonder how it's changed. Fair, Fairways Drive. Look at this little roundabout with its pointy tip. And you get the nice overview, don't you, of the, the Bedford van and the Ford Cortina going round and round and round and round. All overlaid with wonderful Bix Beiderbeck music. And then he nips out of the junction here and heads back to the crossing like the clappers. So let's have a look. Where's the train? There's supposed to be a train. You've closed the gate. Oh, aye. I'll just have a look. And he goes, you're dead right. <laughs> I can't do Yorkshire accent. You're dead right. So I reckon what they must have done to get the angle of the gate is to take the shot like that, really low. And in taking the shot really low, it gives you the perspective that the, the road is flat. Belmont Crossing, where they shake off their police tail and Big Al is able to then take Jill and Trev to his warehouse. Let's cross over quickly. Whoa! Right, let's go and find another location. I spy with my little eye something beginning with Al's Warehouse. That's right, the parish church of St. Mark's, as used by Big Al for his warehouse. Now it's had a good old clean since um, the last time it was filmed, 37 years ago. It was all in darkness then, but you had Hobson driving down here and you had the policeman knocking on the door. Is this the warehouse? Yeah. Do you want us to break the door down, he says. He says, we shall just calmly and quietly open the door. Big Al opens just the door. Do you want door, to come in? Do you want to come in? I think it's on, maybe on this sarcophagus here that Big Al's sitting pondering and little Norm comes by. I don't like to be noticed, I like to be left alone. Well, that's all anybody wants. It's a man's birthright in a democratic society. What newspaper have you been reading coming out with stuff like that? I made it up. <laughs> oh, Alan Plato, he was such a good writer, wasn't he? Giving each of the characters their own individual personality. I'm not, I'm not a writer, you know? But imagine having to script it such that you conceive the lifeline and life story of every character, and then he intertwines them into the story. Good stuff. Sadly, I can't really show you St. Quentin High. This is the grounds, they're building a housing estate. What was once St. Quentin High has been demolished. And it's now being refurbished into, um, I think, an adult learning centre. So still in the academic realms and fields, but no longer San Quentin High doesn't exist. Oh well, we'll have to go here. Where am I going next? Well, I think I thought I'd visit Trevor's little heap of squalor. And I can confirm that it has not been knocked down. If you look up there, Trevor had the top apartment where he would retreat to when he wasn't spending every Tuesdays and Thursdays alternatively with Jill. This is where it all happens, where the beautiful platinum blonde arrives to sell him some records from a mail order catalogue on behalf of the Cubs football team. And then at the end of the scene, and it's so different in the daytime, look at this, lovely old houses but they have, a they have it darkened and Big Al and Janie cycle down on their bikes in the twilight. I would imagine that wasn't there because 
I have this memory of seeing the view of the city in the distance and it still stands. It hasn't been demolished to make way for a motorway. <laughs> and so finally we have the bowling green, but not before we visit this park, because they're actually at the same location. So in this park, we have Trevor and Jill walking down, being pursued by Dave the Whip. <laughs> who apparently couldn't, um, couldn't talk his way out of a registered envelope, something like that. And she encourages him to go on the swings. And he says, I don't like going on the swings. I don't like going high. I want to go on the slide. Well, go on the rotten slide then. Anyway, they, they, they catch him. The, the, kind of the, the place has changed in 37 years. If we walk up here, I would imagine, and I don't know, but somewhere along here, I mean, this looks like a relatively new wall, but they would have confronted Dave the Wimp and challenged him. Are you the man with no name? And I love the line, of course I've got a name. I'm called Dave. <laughs> ah, classic stuff. Anyway, if it's not the warehouse and it's not the allotment, then it's got to be the bowling green. If you want a meeting with Big Al, you'll see him at the bowling green. I don't know where the entrance is though. And of course in the filming, the bowling green was surrounded by hedgerow and bushes. Oh look, it's average sized Trevor Chaplin. <laughs> so let's just poke the camera over the bowling green. somewhat changed. I suppose the, the green itself is, is still the same, but the old pavilion has gone. Now a porter cabin. So that's it. Oh, I really enjoyed that coming up here to Leeds. Beautiful sunny day. I think I caught most of the locations. So what it was, was the Beidebeck trilogy, which was the affair the tapes and the connection. A wonderfully written comedy drama that meanders at a steady pace, never goes more than 30 miles an hour because that's all this car will do. <laughs> and he'll break the speed limit and be nicked. Let me encourage you, if you've not seen it, you need to see it. You'll probably hate it, you know, if you need a Fast and Furious and Gone in 60 Seconds type television program movie then this isn't what you're looking for but if you just fancy lounging on the couch on a Sunday evening when it's pouring with rain outside settle down with the Beidebeck affair tapes collection I don't think you'll be disappointed so anything I got wrong drop me a comment if you fancy seeing other walkabouts and film location videos hit the like and subscribe button and I'll say thanks for watching bearing with and I'll see you in another video <laughs> bye for now <laughs>